The two ponies sat across from each other in the new diner of Ponyville, simply called Nothing But Wheat. The Grey Earth Pony didn't have the faintest idea of how she came to be there. The whole day so far had been one crazy event after another. All she wanted to do was visit her big sister in Ponyville, and now here she was, wearing black dress shoes and a red dress that covered up her cutie mark. Her mane that usually covered the left side of her face was now being held back by a gold hair clip. Again, she glanced nervously over a couple tables in front of them. One of its occupants was a stallion she couldn't seem to avoid throughout her visit. Big Macintosh was a tall red earth pony with a blonde mane and short tail. Even his cutie mark of a half green apple was being blocked by the tux he wore. At his table sat a mare. Her green dress did its job by hiding both her tail and cutie mark. She flipped the menu she was looking at over and asked Big Mac something to which he nodded to. Pinkie Pie saw who her little sister was looking at and raised an eyebrow before slyly saying, If you want Marble, I could go over to investigate further. Marble faced Pinkie with a horrified look and began shaking her head frantically. Pinkie, however, had a plan already forming in her head. Without warning, she stood up. Don't worry, baby sister, she said with a wink. I'll only be a moment. Marble could only watch as her big sister walked off and disappeared in a crowd of ponies that were being guided to their tables. Where the hyperactive party pony went was anyone's guess. But Marble had a bad feeling of where she would spot her the next time she decided to pop up. A waiter immersed from the kitchen pushing a cart through the waiting crowd. From behind the white sheet, Pinky opened her cover slightly to see if she was headed in the right direction. At last she spotted her target and dove underneath a nearby table. Big Mac and the mare he was dining with were discussing the menu, completely oblivious to the pink pony that was drawing closer. Using her ways of being quick on her hooves and getting away with things that others would be caught at doing in seconds, Pinkie Pie threw on the restaurant's uniform and emerged from her cover. Approaching the two, she saw who the mare was. Now that she was close, she could see that it was Miss Cheerily. Pinkie had to admit, this whole formal attire thing was genius. She couldn't tell who half the ponies were at first glance. A perfect plan for a little get-together. Maybe too perfect. Excuse me, madam and sir, she said, making them turn to face her. Are you ready to order? Pinkie Pie? Said Shirley, looking closely at the pony who hadn't waited on them a few minutes ago. I didn't know you worked here, too. Who is this Pinkie you speak of? Said Pinkie casually as to not blow her already failed disguise. You must have me confused with some pony else. Okay, said Shirley unconvinced, but something told her that this time she didn't want to know why the pink pony was acting strange. I think we're about ready, right Big Mac? Yep, said Big Mac also wondering what Pinkie Pie was up to. For starters, we'll have a large order of- Wait! shouted Pinkie Pie as she pulled out a small notepad and pencil from the pocket of her uniform. Okay, I'm ready. We'll have a large order of fries to split and- did you say split? Asked Pinky, looking up from jotting down the order. Yes, said Shirley patiently. And that will be it for now. We're... That's all, eh? Questioned Pinky, looking down at her notepad before giving the teacher a skeptical look. Are you sure you wouldn't like a warm beverage to add with that? It's a cold night. Maybe you'd like to try a large cocoa to split as well, perhaps. Nope, said Big Mac. Before Pinky could question any further, she spotted the drinks already given to them. She also spotted Marble from across the room. Her face was turning as red as a ripe apple. She picked up her notepad and walked off. Big Mac wanted to see where Pinky was going when Cheerily brought his attention back to why they were there. Marble slid back in her chair as her big sister drew near. Okay, Marble, something's definitely going on, but I got to leave you one last time. Pinky... Marble spoke, taking her sister by surprise. Oh my stars! Marble, you're actually talking! And out in public, too? Not bad. You had me worried for a moment there. Pinky, please, sit back down before you take things too far. But I have to go, Marble. They already ordered an appetizer. And before Marble could interrupt again, Pinky trotted off, making her wish a strong gust of wind would come and sweep her away as she chugged down hers and Pinky's drinks. Back in the kitchen, the pink party pony was having trouble of her own. Her disguise wasn't as foolproof as she originally thought. Eventually, and with great difficulty, she was allowed to carry out the order. When she reached Big Mac's table, the uniform she was wearing before had been taken away, 
making her just another customer. Or in the faculty's eyes, a soon-to-be thrown-out diner. Tough crowd back there? Asked Shirley. Something like that, said Pinky, setting their plate down. Um, Pinky? Is that your sister over there? Yes, she's here too. She's only here for the... Why? Her tone suddenly turned, as if her older sibling powers had just been awakened and were ready to be unleashed. Uh, nothing in particular, said Big Mac, his face starting to grow slightly pink. Pinky eyed the farm pony carefully, and so did Shirley. She, however, looked over Pinky's shoulder and saw Marble, whose face had gone, if possible, even redder. Smiling to herself, she waited to hear what Big Mac had to say. Instead, his blushing stopped as Pinkie Pie gave him a sharp poke to the chest. If you want to talk to her, fine, but I'm watching you, Buster. Marble felt her stomach drop. Oh no, don't let her... Hey, Marble! Big Mac wants to talk to you! Unbelievable. She didn't seem to care that some of the diners had their eyes on them. Marble froze as her big sister approached her. Pinkie Pie lifted her sister from her seat, and a second later, plopped her in front of Big Mac and Shirley. Charlie Marble, Marble Charlie. Marble couldn't speak. Her mouth was closed and her body remained tensed. Finally, it was Charlie who spoke. Well, hello, Marble. It's nice to meet you at last. Marble wanted to respond, but she felt as if her mouth had gone dry. Apple Bloom has told me all about you and the rest of the Pie family. Why, just last year when she came back from visiting you all on the rock farm? One of the waiters approached the table and whispered into Pinkie Pie's ear. Sorry to cut this little meeting short, but I've just been told we had to go. Chimed in Pinkie Pie, noting the two stallions watching them by the entrance doors. Something about impersonating an employee and causing a scene in the kitchens didn't sit well here. She nudged Marble, but she stayed where she was. Even Big Mac seemed to be at a loss for words. Cheerily took charge. Big Mac, you want to say how nice it was seeing Marble again, don't you? Big Mac blushed. <laughs> yep. And Marble, I expect the same goes for you, too. Marble felt that if she said anything, she might faint from embarrassment. So she nodded. Okay, see you guys around, said Pinky, gathering Marble and leaving the restaurant. Once outside, the feel of the cold winter night seemed to have brought Marble back to her senses. If there was any time for her to speak her mind, now would be the time. She opened her mouth, but before she could get a single word through, her big sister pulled her close. All right, Marble, you know who Miss Cheerley is. Now you have to play your cards right. Don't you worry, though. Your big sister Pinkie Pie is here to help. Oh, it's on now. Teacher versus, um, other silent type. Pinky let her awestruck sister go as she galloped on ahead. Something told Marble that the next time she saw Big Mac and Cheerily, her big sister would have something up her sleeve. Back in the restaurant, Big Mac and Cheerily greeted the rest of the Apple family. Apple Bloom dove into the hay fries while Cheerily told them what had happened while they waited for them. Oh, what? Apple Bloom said in disappointment. I would have liked to see Marble again. I just hope Pinkie Pie didn't cause too much trouble. Said Applejack apologetically. Not at all, said Shirley pleasantly. It was nice to have some excitement while we waited. Now, let's discuss Apple Bloom's grades. <laughs>